The information in this presentation has been developed by the Blue Heron Academy of Healing Arts and Sciences, one of the nation's leading schools of massage therapy, complementary and alternative medicine, in conjunction with the American Medical Massage Association. Hydrotherapy has long been a vital tool used by the massage therapist for the treatment and care of patients. We hope that the information provided in this course will assist you with the safe and effective care of your patients. Welcome to this presentation on hydrotherapy. Hello, my name is Sandra Bovi, and for the next few minutes, we are going to talk about the healing powers of water. The word naturopathy was first created by Dr. John Scheel of New York City and was later purchased and made popular by Benedict Lust. Benedict Lust is considered to be the founder of naturopathy. Dr. Lust considered naturopathy to include all the drugless healing arts, including hydrotherapy, herbology, magnetics, homeopathy, osteopathy, chiropractic, and many other popular natural medicine practices of his time. Dr. Benedict Lust was treated and cured by Father Kneipp in Werschofen, Germany. He became a student and associate of Kneipp and was later sent to the United States to bring and to establish the principles and methods of the Kneipp water cure to America. Benedict Lust made this statement regarding naturopathy. What is naturopathy accomplishing? The answer to that is everything. Naturopathy holds the key for the prevention of every ailment to man and beast alike. Whatever the body can catch, the same body with proper handling can eliminate. During my years of practice, I personally have seen every type of human ailment and so-called serious disease give way to the simple, proven naturopathic methods. Contemporary definitions of naturopathic medicine are often based upon differences in philosophy regarding natural health care, education and training, and membership in the various professional trade associations that represent naturopathic physicians. The American Association of Naturopathic Physicians, AANP, for example, defines naturopathy as naturopathic medicine practiced by doctors who have attended a four-year, full-time, accredited naturopathic medical school. In addition to the AANP, there are many other naturopathic organizations and associations that have different philosophies, standards of practice, and educational and training standards. A loose definition does exist between what is called medical naturopathy and true naturopathy. Medical naturopathy includes the definition provided by the AANP as described above and tends to include a number of medical practices including laboratory analysis, radiological imaging, obstetrics, and minor surgery. Another possible difference between medical and true naturopathy may be the reliance on synthetic nutraceuticals by the medical naturopath, but this practice is not always a clear distinction between the two kinds of naturopathic practice. True naturopathy adheres to traditional naturopathic philosophy and practices as is closely related to the nature cure and natural hygiene movements. Both of these movements were popular in the United States at the time of naturopathy's birth in the early 1900s. True naturopathy employs the techniques and treatment protocols of homeopathy, hydrotherapy, herbology, and natural dietary consultation. Consider this definition of naturopathic medicine. Naturopathic medicine is a specialized system of health care and a healing art, science, philosophy, as well as the practice of diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of disease. Naturopathy is distinguished by the principles that define it and determine its practice. The principles of naturopathy are based upon the objective and systematic observation of the fundamental nature of health and disease and continue to be redefined by scientific research. Naturopathy utilizes procedures, methods, techniques, and protocols that are consistent with the fundamental principles of natural health and that are employed based upon patient individuality. Naturopathic physicians may be primary health care providers or consultants that work within the total medical health care system. The methods used by a naturopath may include modern and traditional, scientific and empirical procedures. 
According to the Council on Naturopathic Registration and Accreditation, naturopathic doctors are trained specialists in a separate and distinct healing art which uses non-invasive natural medicine. They are not orthodox medical doctors, MDs. Naturopathic doctors, NDs, are conventionally trained in subjects such as anatomy, physiology, counseling, dietary evaluations, nutrition, herbology, acupressure, muscle relaxation, and structural normalization, homeopathy, iridology, exercise therapy, hydrotherapy, oxygen therapy, and thermal therapy. Some practitioners are also trained in additional specialties, such as acupuncture or natural childbirth. Naturopathic doctors tailor the healing modality to the needs of the individual with methods which are effective for both chronic and acute problems. Naturopathic doctors cooperate with all branches of medical science, referring individuals to other practitioners for diagnosis or treatment when appropriate. In practice, naturopathic doctors perform lifestyle analysis, laboratory testing, nutritional and dietary assessments, metabolic analysis, and other evaluative procedures. They are trained to use a wide variety of natural methods which involve the individual in the healing process. Naturopathy is based upon a belief in the body's innate God-given natural ability to heal itself when given an appropriate internal and external healing environment. Naturopaths are not involved in the practice of medicine and do not use drugs or pharmaceuticals, nor do they perform abortions or surgery other than minor first aid. They have traditionally been referred to as drugless doctors. In reality, naturopathy deals with wellness and relief from conditions which are the result of stress, whether from mental, nutritional, environmental, or physical factors. Naturopathic doctors, NDs, have participated in a specialized course of study and received degrees in naturopathy. Some states license naturopaths and regulate the profession. In those states, the naturopaths must also have passed a national or state board examination and their practice is subject to review by a state board of examiners. Several naturopathic professional organizations also require the candidate to pass a proficiency test in naturopathy in order to join their organization. Did you know that? In 1983, the World Health Organization recommended the integration of naturopathic medicine into conventional health care systems. In 1994, Bastyr University of Natural Health Sciences, a naturopathic medical school, was awarded almost $1 million in research funds from the National Institute of Health's Office of Alternative Medicine to research alternative therapies for patients with HIV and AIDS. Graduates of accredited naturopathic medical colleges are required to have more hours of study in basic sciences and clinical sciences than graduates of Yale or Stanford medical schools. The anti-cancer diet recognized by the National Cancer Institute was first published in a naturopathic medical textbook in the 1940s. Graduates of accredited naturopathic medical colleges receive more formal training in therapeutic nutrition than MDs, osteopathic physicians, or registered dietitians. The government of Germany now requires conventional doctors and pharmacists to receive training in naturopathic techniques because they have been found to be so cost-effective. Today, there are over 1,000 licensed practicing naturopathic physicians, NDs, in the United States. As of August 1996, 12 states in the United States and 5 provinces of Canada now license naturopathic doctors as primary care physicians. It is projected that all 50 states will license naturopathic physicians by the year 2010. Three accredited colleges educate and train naturopathic doctors in North America. The County Council in Seattle, Washington established the nation's first government-subsidized naturopathic medical clinic and that the origin of naturopathy can be traced back to the ancient healing arts of a variety of cultures. Still as a formal system of medicine and healing, it was developed in the United States nearly 100 years ago by Benjamin Lust. Naturopathy is based upon a number of principles. These principles include the healing power of nature, 
Identify and treat the causes of disease. First, do no harm. The doctor as teacher. Treat the entire person. Let's explore each of these concepts beginning with the healing power of nature. One of the obvious characteristics of nature is growth. Nature is self-organizing and self-maintaining, and all organisms utilize these inherent characteristics in the healing process to maintain and restore health. These innate characteristics of natural organisms and natural systems to move towards self-organizing and self-maintaining activities are a form of ordered intelligence. The naturopath attempts to identify and to work with the body's own natural healing processes to support, augment, and to facilitate growth and repair in the body, to remove obstacles to the body's healing processes, and to provide opportunities for the body to maintain balance. Identify and treat the causes. The key to treating illness and disease lies in the identification of the cause of the patient's problem. Disease does not occur without a cause, and cause may originate for a variety of multifactorial causes and from both problems and imbalances within the body and from external causes outside of the body. A person's symptoms may be manifestations of the body's attempt to protect and to defend itself, to adapt and recover from internal and external stressors, to heal itself, or may be the results of the causes of the disease process itself. First, do no harm. There are three precepts that are used by naturopathic physicians to avoid causing harm to patients. First, respect for and utilization of the nature cure process. Second, restoring balance and the avoidance of symptom suppression. And third, the principle of homeosomatic response, or that the body likes what is most like the body and the avoidance of methods, techniques, and substances that cause harmful effects. The doctor as teacher. The word doctor, docere, from the Latin means teacher. The practice of naturopathy is largely a patient education process. Patients need to be taught the basic principles of healing and body function, along with diet, exercise, stress management, herbal medicine, and other natural practices. Treat the whole person. The central causes of disease are multifactorial, meaning that human beings are complex organisms. The causes of disease are multidimensional and have physical, mental, emotional, genetic, environmental, social, and other causative factors. Naturopaths have also adopted the methods of hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy means water therapy and is the therapeutic use of water to prevent disease, promote health, and treat disease. Hydrotherapy has been employed therapeutically for many centuries and by many cultures, including the Babylonians, East Indians, Native Americans, Egyptians, and Greeks. Anne Stone offers this perspective on the effects of hydrotherapy. The root of hydrotherapy lies in the belief that water is the essence of life. A major part of our body is made up of water, and we can only live a few days without drinking it. Water is also a constituent of most foods. The beneficial power of water has been valued since ancient times. Steam baths were popular among the ancient Greeks and Turks. At Lourdes in France, there is a spa Christian shrine. Many people believe that miracles have occurred there. There are many ways to use water for therapy. In most, the temperature of the water, whether neutral, hot, or cold, is significant. When hot water or steam is used, its effect is to dilate blood vessels, encourage sweating, and relax muscles and joints. When cold water or ice is used, its effect is to constrict blood vessels, reduce inflammation, and stimulate flow of blood to organs. A hot bath is used to relax muscles, ease pain, and promote sweating in order to remove impurities. And a cold bath is used to reduce inflammation and improve circulation. Sometimes a jet of water is sprayed onto all or part of the body, but the temperature of the water spray is adjusted according to the condition being treated. Steam baths are used to produce profuse sweating, which helps carry impurities through pores in the skin. Conditions treated and assisted by hydrotherapy are back pain, joint problems, rheumatism, 
muscle injuries, gallstones, headaches, menstrual problems, anemia, arthritis, strains and sprains, asthma, and anxiety. Also, birthing pools are being used increasingly in natural childbirth. The Principles of Hot and Cold Water Boyle and Sane indicate that hydrotherapy's benefits arise from the capacity of both warm and cold water to improve blood flow to organs and tissues, transporting vital nutrients to the working cells, while at the same time removing the waste products of our cells' work. Early naturopaths identified five organs as emunctories, organs of elimination, helping to remove waste products from the body. Liver, kidneys, lungs, gastrointestinal tract, and skin. They found that hydrotherapy improves overall health by increasing blood flow to each of these organs, allowing them to perform their eliminative work optimally. If blood flow was stagnant, they argued, the weight of morbid matter, what we might now think of as toxic burden, including free radicals that damage our tissues, industrial pollutants, and the waste products of our own bodily processes, would accumulate enough to cause ill health. Hydrotherapy, on the other hand, promotes the process of detoxification through improved blood flow, increased sweating to remove toxins through the skin, better absorption of nutrients from food, and more regular bowel activity, and increased urination, indicating increased kidney activity, reabsorption of nutrients while excreting wastes. Yet removing wastes is not hydrotherapy's only function. It also helps build the blood by increasing desirable elements, such as red and white blood cells, nutrients, and oxygen. In addition, water treatments improve immune functioning by nourishing the reticuloendothelial system through which our illness-fighting white blood cells recognize invaders and are guided to the tissues where they are needed. Research has demonstrated that hydrotherapy can boost immune function, eliminate excess fluid, and reduce the incidence of colds and flu by 50%. External hydrotherapy treatments produce profound effects on immune function, particularly through applications of hot water, which increases the number and activity of natural killer cells, key white blood cells the body recruits in its fight against cancer. Cancer cells are more vulnerable to heat than normal healthy cells, dying at temperatures at and above 42 degrees centigrade or 107.6 degrees Fahrenheit, though this temperature cannot be safely achieved by use of hydrotherapy. The PDR Health, an online health information service, says this about hydrotherapy. Although the use of water to treat illnesses is a time-honored medical technique, it has recently declined in popularity among mainstream physicians. The application of hot and cold water or water-soaked compresses to manage the pain and swelling of soft tissue injuries and burns is still standard practice and has been proven effective in a variety of well-controlled clinical trials. Likewise, physical therapy performed in water is still a common treatment for the disabled. However, other forms of hydrotherapy are no longer routinely used in hospitals and most medical schools no longer teach the techniques. The hydrotherapy formerly used in psychiatric clinics is now considered obsolete. In the world of natural healing, however, hydrotherapy continues to claim devoted proponents. Techniques such as constitutional hydrotherapy and hot fomentation, both of which seek to rid the body of toxins, are advocated for a wide range of diseases. Watsu, a sort of aquatic version of Chinese deep tissue massage, is said to help pain, stiff joints, spasticity, and tension. Although none of these techniques have been validated through clinical trials, practitioners point to a growing file of case studies as proof of their success. Among hydrotherapy's more conventional uses are treatment of soft tissue injuries, musculoskeletal injuries, back pain, arthritis, premenstrual syndrome, menstrual cramps, diabetes, and other diseases that impair circulation, balance disorders, and muscle weakness. Let's review the physiological effects of hot water applications that are at a temperature of 98 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The effects are 1. Blood moves toward the area of application, initially. 2. Immediate. Vasodilation. 3. Post-effect. Vasoconstriction. 4. Short application. Less than 5 minutes is a stimulant.
and five, long application. More than five minutes is a depressant. Let's review the physiological effects of cold water applications that are at a temperature of 55 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The effects are, one, blood moves away from the area of application initially, two, immediate, vasoconstriction, three, post effect, vasodilation, four, short application, less than five minutes is a stimulative, and five, long application, more than five minutes is a depressant. One therapeutic approach that is used by hydrotherapists to stimulate the cells, tissue, and organs of the body is to use short alternating applications of hot and cold water. Hydrotherapy has direct and indirect effects on local and general body blood circulation and fluid dynamics such as effects on lymph and interstitial fluids. A method of hydrotherapy that mobilizes blood or lymph from one part of the body to another, such as the primary area of treatment, is called the derivative method. The theory of derivative hydrotherapy is to decrease the fluid, such as blood or lymph, in one area of the body or body part by increasing the amount of blood or lymph in another body area or body part. Another method of hydrotherapy treatment is called retrostasis. Retrostasis is the driving of blood or lymph from one area of the body to another. An example of retrostasis would be applying cold to the head and heat to the feet for a headache caused by cerebral congestion. The precautions and counterindications of hydrotherapy include 1. Use caution and frequent monitoring of elderly, pediatric, obese, and debilitated patients. 2. Avoid the use of excessive heat, blistering, scalding, and burning. 3. Avoid the use of excessive cold, skin, and cell damage. 4. Skin conditions that may be further irritated. 5. Skin conditions worsened by moisture. 6. Cold is contraindicated in debilitated patients. 7. When using alternating hot and cold water applications, always begin with cold. Make the hot application longer in duration than the cold application and in the applications with cold. Let's look at how hydrotherapy is applied in the treatment of patients, beginning with the cold compress application. Whether applying heat or cold, these applications will always be made to be more effective if heat and cold is applied through a fabric or cloth material, cotton or wool flannel, for example, that has been soaked in either hot or cold water as opposed to applications of dry heat or dry cold. Both dry heat and dry cold contribute to fluid congestion or edema in the area of application. The hot foot bath application is applied as follows. Fill a small tub or container with 104 Fahrenheit water and put both feet into the tub. Drape the lower extremity with a blanket so that it covers the tub of water. Over the next five minutes, gradually add hot water to bring the temperature to 110 Fahrenheit. Let the feet remain in the water for 10 to 30 minutes at a constant 110 Fahrenheit. Apply a cold compress to the head or forehead if needed. At the conclusion of the treatment, pour cold water over the feet and ankles. This hydrotherapy treatment protocol will increase general blood flow through the entire body and is good for patients with restricted blood flow, cold extremities, or high blood pressure. The hot application will increase metabolism and can raise body temperature. When body metabolism, temperature, and lymphatic fluid flow and exchange is increased, so is the effectiveness and activity of the immune system. A hot compress or hot application is more effective when heat is combined with cold and hot water. To apply a hot compress, soak a cotton towel in cold water and wring the water out of it so that the towel will not drip. Wrap this cold compress around or place it directly over the area to be treated. Over this cold and damp towel, place a barrier of plastic. Over the plastic, apply a warm, not hot, heat pack or waterproof electric heating source. Since this application is a mild application of heat, the duration of application can be 60 minutes or longer. The initial application of a cold, damp towel causes vasoconstriction, which is gradually followed by vasodilation. 
Wet sheet pack applications are used to reduce fevers and to promote sweating and relaxation. Set up the treatment table with a table cover and three to five layers of cotton sheets. In this hydrotherapy technique, the entire body is wrapped with a cold, wet sheet and covered by several layers of dry sheets, three to five, and a solar blanket. Cover the patient in a single layer of sheet and then wet a second cotton sheet in cold water. Wring the sheet out so that it does not drip and cover the first layer of sheet and the patient in the cold, wet sheet. Add several more layers of dry cotton sheets over the cold, wet sheet, three to five layers, and wrap the patient in a solar blanket. The patient should be completely wrapped in the sheets, and the blanket and a towel should be placed around the patient's neck and over as much of the face and head as is possible without causing breathing difficulties. Make certain that the patient can breathe easily and freely. The room temperature should be slightly warmer than usual, and you may also use additional sources of heat such as a heat lamp, hot water bottle, moist heat packs, thermophore, or electric heating pad. The patient should be checked periodically to assure that they are warm and comfortable and not chilled. The patient will experience several stages of response to this method of hydrotherapy. Stage 1, 5 to 20 minutes, cooling and body temperature reduction of the body. Stage 2, 15 to 30 minutes, neutral, no significant response in the body. Stage 3, 30 to 60 minutes, heating and increased body temperature. Stage 4, 60 minutes or more, sweating and relaxation of the body. Stage 1 is used to reduce fevers and stage 3 to encourage healing processes in the body. The length of time of treatment with this method must be matched to the needs and health status of the patient. Stage 4 is too intense for debilitated, weakened, or seriously ill patients. Stage 4 is contraindicated in patients with anemia. Constitutional Hydrotherapy Constitutional hydrotherapy was developed by Dr. Otis G. Carroll and is generally considered to be an improvement on the earlier work of Father Sebastian Kneipp. Hydrotherapy is an ancient practice dating back at least to the use of healing baths and mineral springs in ancient Roman times. Simple economical techniques, such as the use of alternating hot and cold foot baths, heating compresses, wrapping an affected body part with a well-wrung-out, cool cloth and placing a warm, dry wool cloth over it, and steam baths have been a part of home health treatments in a variety of cultures for generations. According to Boyle and Sane, the water cure by Father Sebastian Kneipp attracted thousands of people to his small Bavarian parish of Wereschofen. Dr. Otis G. Carroll, one of the founders of naturopathy in the early 20th century, became a proponent of hydrotherapy after receiving a successful treatment from one of Father Kneipp's students. Also an electrician, Dr. Carroll not only developed and refined Kneipp's methods, but also combined them with the emerging practice of electrotherapy to produce constitutional hydrotherapy, a mainstay of water treatment today. This combination of applying moist towels, alternately hot and cold to the chest, abdomen, and back, and use of a gentle electrical current enhances the immune response, improves the body's capacity to absorb and utilize nutrients, encourages the removal of cellular and environmental wastes, and promotes a healthy balance between the two parts of our autonomic nervous system, the fight-or-flight sympathetic and the rest-and-digest parasympathetic systems, which regulate all our bodily processes. Constitutional hydrotherapy combines systematic application of hot and cold wet towels and the administration of mild electrical stimulation to various muscle groups. The method presented here does not include the use of electrical therapy, but it is described in the information to follow. Before starting the therapy, the therapist conducts a physical examination to evaluate the patient's condition and to gain baseline body information, including body temperature, blood pressure, and heart sounds. After this examination of the patient is concluded and it has been determined that constitutional hydrotherapy is safe for the patient, the therapy is delivered in a series of stages, beginning with stage 1, where the patient is placed in the supine position. This stage, stage 1, will last for approximately 30 minutes. 
The following instructions describe the step-by-step -step procedures of stage one. Cover the torso of the patient with two hot, wet towels wrung out so that they are moist but not dripping and folded in half. The temperature of the towels should be about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the towels are in place, cover the patient in a solar blanket, leaving it loose so that air can circulate around the body. The towels and blanket are left in place for five minutes. Once the towels have cooled down, place a new set of hot towels over the original ones. Then flip the towels so that new ones are next to the patient's body and remove the old ones. Leave the new hot towels in place for five minutes and then place folded cold towels over the hot towels and flip the towels again. The cold towels remain in place on the chest for 10 minutes. During each addition of towels, the flipping of the towels and the removal of the towels, always replace the solar blanket while the towels are being used. If electrotherapy is combined with this alternating hot and cold towel treatment, sine wave, electrical pads are applied on either side of the spine just below the shoulders. The pads provide a mild electrical current to the muscles. The electrical current frequently feels like a buzzing or tickling sensation to the patient. This application and the sensation is not painful. The electrotherapy session is normally conducted for 10 minutes. The electrotherapy pads can be directly placed over areas of involvement, such as an injury or bone fracture. After the 10 minutes of electrotherapy have been concluded, remove the cold towels and continue with the electrotherapy for another 10 minutes by positioning the electrotherapy pads as follows. One pad is placed directly over the center of the lumbar or low back region. The other pad is placed directly over the solar plexus region. Electrotherapy techniques are contraindicated for patients with cardiac pacemakers and other contraindications for electrotherapy such as metal implants. In stage two, the patient is prone and the entire process, as has just been described, the alternating of hot and cold towels is repeated. The electrotherapy process is not repeated. We do not recommend attempting to practice the electrotherapy portion of this procedure without detailed personalized instruction. Constitutional hydrotherapy is contraindicated in the following cases and in patients with an acute bladder infection, acute asthma, malignant fever, an oral temperature less than 97 degrees Fahrenheit, heart conditions, a pacemaker, kidney disease, bleeding disorders, loss of sensation or pain, metal implants, organ transplant patients, frail elderly debilitated patients. The final hydrotherapy technique that we want to review with you in this presentation is the hot fomentation application. The hot fomentation application is applied as follows. With the patient prone, place a dry sheet over the patient, then place hot, moist towels over the dry sheet. Place several layers of dry towels over the moist towels and then another dry sheet. Cover the patient with a solar blanket. The hot fomentation technique can also be used on specific regions of the body to relieve specific symptoms, such as menstrual cramps or PMS. The length of application of the hot fomentation technique can be from 20 to 60 minutes. The frequency of treatment depends upon the condition being treated and whether the condition is acute or chronic. As has been indicated in this introductory presentation on hydrotherapy, water therapy has been used safely and effectively to treat the aches, pains, and ills of mankind for thousands of years. We hope that you will now be able to use a few of these basic hydrotherapy techniques for the benefit of your patients.